There is a ton of Marvel Studio content coming at us in the near future. In this video, we are not covering what we know that is coming down the road. Instead, we're going to talk about what is rumored to be in development after the current slate that exists. So let's get into that. So first up in this, we obviously know Disney Plus is going to be a huge outlet for Marvel Studios. You know, they're looking to split up three to four shows a year on Disney Plus and three to four films out there in theaters for a total of eight to ten pieces of live action content, considering they said they're nowhere near done announcing how much we're going to get per year. So with that in mind, let's move into what everybody wants to know. What are the current things that are rumored to be in development for the MCU? Well, first and foremost, let's start off with the obvious one. Yes, he doesn't have a date or anything, but we can guarantee he's coming to the MCU, and that is Deadpool. This character is a moneymaker. Now, will he be under the Marvel Studios banner specifically because it's going to be rated R? Or is he going to get put over to the Fox side of things and then have the Marvel branding on him and possibly start a new subdivision of Marvel, like maybe Marvel Knights or something? That's the big factor here. There's been all sorts of rumors on what's going to happen to him, but we know for a fact he will be rated R. He's coming sometime in the next five years as it's already been written. And of course, he will be part of the larger Marvel Universe. So Deadpool, that's happening. So after Deadpool, we're going to transition over to the other popular mutant, which happens to be Wolverine. Now, Wolverine has been rumored to be coming to the MCU over the course of the last year and a half, really, ever since that deal started to become a reality. Now, with the most recent rumors about the X-Men being largely standalone, and of course Wolverine being his own player that could possibly face Hulk or somebody else, and then inevitably teaming up with the X-Men because they want to do it different than what Fox did and not make him a core member, this would make a lot of sense. Various people involved with Marvel Studios from Kevin Feige to the Russo brothers, the directors of Infinity War and Endgame have said Wolverine is something they want to do. Wolverine is already a billion dollar franchise, so I think this one is a guarantee as well. Now let's go for a little bit of a cosmic ride. Nova the Human Rocket. Nova has been rumored for years, ever since the Guardians of the Galaxy was announced. Now whether this happens anytime soon or not, that's a big one. But of course, Nova has already kind of an established backstory that you can easily work into the MCU. And of course, Nova lends himself towards selling lots of merchandise and moving comics, as we've seen, because he's a fan favorite. So this kind of is a no-brainer. Now, many people want to know whether it's going to be Sam Alexander, the younger version of Nova, or the older one with Richard. It could honestly go either way, and I think the rumors most recently suggested that this character could be appearing in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, and then possibly leading into his own spin-off, or even going the route where he teams up with Captain Marvel and then going somewhere down the road. Either way, I think Nova is quite clearly a fan favorite. Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios are listening, and this character will be here before we know it. Now, when it comes to different characters, DC has Aquaman, Marvel has Namor. From what we understand, Universal and Disney slash Marvel Studios have ended that long-standing contract, which sort of prevented the character like She-Hulk from appearing in the MCU. Now that they're producing a TV series, the Hulk seems to be a little bit more readily available. This means that Namor is back home with Marvel. Joe Quesada, even as far back as a couple years ago, said he believed that Namor was fully owned by Marvel Studios. Now, of course, Namor, I think, is somewhat of a given down the road, but what happens to him first? Does he appear in Black Panther? Are they holding him off for something else? Is he just going to have a standalone film? I think that remains to be seen, but I think Namor at this point is a guarantee, and considering he's literally Marvel's first superhero, let's celebrate that by finally bringing the Submariner in. Now off of Namor, let's talk about another big team which has been rumored for quite a while that is possibly in development, and that is Marvel Studios' The Thunderbolts. This has been something that's been in discussion since before Guardians of the Galaxy, as that is why James Gunn got hired. He actually wrote a treatment for the Thunderbolts saying that this was something he wanted to do. He sat down with Kevin Feige and they figured out that the Guardians would be more up his wheelhouse. He has said that once he's done with Guardians, him and Feige are going to have a chat. Thunderbolts is quite clearly being set up and the chess pieces are being laid down throughout the rest of the MCU, specifically with the next phase. So I think this one is going to end up being true 
Thunderbolts is coming, whether we like it or not. And I'm pretty sure everybody likes it. Now, while he already exists in the MCU, it is time to bring the Ghost Rider in. We of course heard rumors right before the show was cancelled that Kevin Feige had his eyes set on Ghost Rider, specifically Johnny Blaze. Then the cancellation came, more people came out to talk about the fact that that was a true report. And now, with the likes of the Midnight Suns and the Spirits of Vengeance clearly being established in the MCU, Ghost Rider is right around the corner. Now, whether it's going to be Johnny Blaze, or as some of the rumors suggest that it could be one of the female writers, or maybe even somebody completely new, we don't really know, but we know for a fact that the Ghost Riders do have multiple versions and of course have a rich history of different riders. So you could make a feasible team up or play around and make an amalgamation of a few characters, that's always a possibility, but I think Ghost Rider is a guarantee. Probably not in the next three to four years, but in the next seven to eight, I think more or less you're going to see this character and he's going to play around in the same ballpark and the same environments with Moon Knight, Blade, and some of the other characters. Now going from ripping into your soul and checking your fear to the man without fear, Daredevil, I think this one is bound to make a comeback. We've heard plenty of rumors, there's been a lot of chatter, Kevin Feige has talked about Daredevil as a character, Charlie Cox has talked about how he has a movie contract, I think this one is a given. Now I don't think it's a movie, I'm not saying we're not gonna get a Daredevil movie, I'm saying, you know, it just doesn't make sense, he worked as a TV series, you can bring this character into the Disney Plus side of things and have the character interact with some of the other darker characters that you're establishing. This would make sense, it just sounds like they're waiting for that time to expire from the Netflix contract to be able to bring him in. Maybe not next year, it would still be too early, but four to five years from now, Charlie Cox coming back as Daredevil is I think a given. There's no way they reboot it since it's a huge fan favorite. So this one, I think you can more or less expect it. Next up, let's talk about Ironheart. We've heard about this one. We've heard about the script that's out there. We've talked about the fact that this character was being positioned to take over for Iron Man, but they seem to be putting on a back burner to kind of let Iron Man's death have an impact on the MCU. Now the status of this is still largely unknown. I have personally talked to one of the people that worked on a script that was submitted, so I know it is for a fact a thing that exists out there that Marvel has on their radar. Now honestly, I think this is probably out of everything we're talking about in this video, something that is the furthest away. I think this one realistically, you're looking at 7 to 8 to maybe even further years away. It just doesn't make sense to rush it. Wait for Iron Man's death to really be felt. Wait for some other characters to appear that people want, like the X-Men and the Fantastic Four. Then when the world needs a new Iron Man-like character, when Rhodey has given up that spot, then you can bring Ironheart in. By that time, you know, you can have Morgan Stark. She's old enough. You can do something with that. Honestly, I think that would work perfectly and you still keep Riri in the mix. You satisfy everybody, all the fans, and I think that would be the best approach to it. Now we're going to transition over back to the cosmic side of things with the Silver Surfer. Now the Surfer is an interesting one. We know they were completing a treatment of the Silver Surfer movie for Fox before the buyout. So it's one of the scripts that was presented to Kevin Feige. Now honestly, I believe in my heart he's going to completely not go that route and use whatever script they had unless it was a very solid origin story that could fit within the MCU. But then again, the Silver Surfer is one of the most powerful characters out there and you have to find a good way to be able to balance this. They already have quite a few powerful characters out there such as Thor and Captain Marvel. So you're going to have to do something a little different. James Gunn has expressed a lot of interest in using the Silver Surfer in the MCU in an upcoming film if he had the chance. Guardians 3 I think would be the optimal choice here to introduce Norrin Rad and not yet the Silver Surfer, then show his downfall in a potential standalone or the Fantastic Four film. But down the road I think you will get Silver Surfer in some sort of manner, I just don't think it's anytime soon. The status of development I would say is scrapped, but he will be appearing in the MCU. Now next up, American Chavez. This character was rumored to be in development for a possible ABC series, but then Kevin Feige ended up taking over Marvel Studios, and everything is kind of up in the air. I'm willing to say that this has probably been scrapped in that iteration, and they're looking for a chance to introduce this character in some other sort of fashion. My best guess would be 
this character will appear somewhere alongside the likes of Miss Marvel in her series, and if there's enough demand, you could see her spin off into her own, as it's something that I think Marvel Studios and Marvel want to push forward with. Other than that, I don't think it goes anything like they originally intended. Definitely not an ABC series. Last upon our list, War Machine. We know this film was in development, they had scripts out there, and it was going to happen right before Iron Man 3. He was looking like he was going to potentially carry a trilogy forward, but things changed as they set course towards a more cosmic side of things. Now, War Machine as a film, I don't think makes sense, but if you want people to have their Iron Man fix and tune in to Disney Plus, somebody wearing armor the entire time, much like the Mandalorian, you can really focus on a cool aspect, maybe tell some of those stories that Rhodey has, this I think would be a perfect outlet. He just makes sense for it. War Machine, a perfect fit for Disney Plus. And honestly, I think this one happens. It's just a little bit of a uh, time away. And we've heard rumors even recently that that's exactly what was going to happen. So I think War Machine on Disney Plus, it's a perfect match. So thank you for taking the time to watch that video. If you guys would like more content that we offer here for channel members, which you guys can check out in the little joint button down below, we do offer additional content such as exclusive podcasts and topic discussions, our gaming podcast, Star Wars TV series reviews, Marvel show reviews, DC Universe, and CW reviews. We offer personal vlogs, backlog reviews of TV TV shows and movies, video game topics, and Q&As. And of course, in one of our best tiers, we offer audio commentaries on TV shows and movies, along with a bunch of other stuff you guys can check out just by clicking that join button and seeing what is on offer.